Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Berry with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, welcome to the closing session of CERC 2024. Uh, our session this morning is going to be looking at organic waste regulations and choosing right technologies. Our speakers today are Karen Moore, Environmental Administrator, Division of Waste Management, Florida Department of Environmental Protection. We also have Mackenzie Barnhart, Sales Engineer from Eckenward Tech. She'll be talking about organic diversion versus recycling capacity. We also have Daniel Collins, Biosolids and Environmental Management System Consultant with Collins Environmental, LLC. He'll be speaking with us today on developing a strategic plan and environmental management system lead Chicago to composting for Class A biosolids. And we'll start out now with Ms. Karen Moore. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you again. I saw some of you guys yesterday afternoon for food diversion, and um, today we're gonna take the next step. We're no longer diverting, well, we are diverting, but we're actually going to a beneficial use. I'm gonna give you an update of the regulatory setting for organics in the state of Florida, and just a little bit additional information about uh, what's happening. My name again is Karen Moore. I am the Waste Reduction Recycling Administrator for the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, the person who usually um, handles our organics is Lauren O'Connor, so I'm happy to answer questions the best I can. If I can't answer it today, I'll certainly defer you to Lauren. I'm sure she's glad I'm giving her name out <laughs> right now, but um, with that, we will get started. And let me click the button. Okay. We're good to go? Okay. I'll get my notes situated. Okay, this is the current state of waste and organics in the state of Florida. The pie chart here, let's see, it's going to be on your left hand side gives you the breakdown of municipal solid waste in the state. As you can see, construction and demolition debris makes up the largest piece of that pie of waste that is actually being generated in the state. But followed by that are organics. That's kind of the hatched pattern that you see here. Yard waste is about 10% of our waste stream. Food waste is about almost 7% of our waste stream. So um, again, it does make up quite a bit of our waste stream in the state. We do have year-round growing seasons. Um, of course, we do have year-round construction season as well. Um, on the right-hand side, you'll see a table that is municipal solid waste and recycled organics. So when you're taking a look at how are we doing recycling our organics in the state, you'll see yard waste is being recycled at about 59%, that's pretty good. We have quite a few yard waste processors in the state. Um, a little bit of food waste, some of it again being donated, diverted, and some of it being composted, about 6%. And then we have paper in there, and you can see kind of the percentages of what's happening with paper as well. So the focus on Florida organics recycling has been the production and use of compost processed at source separated organic processing facilities. We call those our SOPFs. And that includes our yard trash, it includes manure, animal byproducts, and vegetative waste. Our vegetative waste essentially is our pre and post consumer food waste. In 2023, Florida had over 300 SOPFs processing over 3 million tons of organics. We also saw an increase in community composting operations, processing food throughout the state. Uh, we are very proud of our community composters. Um, we are seeing those grow um, monthly now. They, they have really picked up the pace here in the state. And we are in rulemaking currently for our organics rule, which is 62709, Florida Administrative Code. It's the criteria for organics processing and recycling facilities. This is a list of our registered and permitted facilities in the state. Um, you can see up at the top, these are our SOPF registered facilities. You can tell mostly what we're doing here in the state yard waste. We have 300 and actually it's 25, not 15. I've updated since <laughs> I even uh, the presentation was made. 
We have 325 yard waste mulching composting facilities, and then you can see our other registered uh, SOPFs. We also have four actual com um, permitted composting facilities. We have 15 biosolids and five anaerobic digested per digesting permitted and permitting facilities. That's a tongue twister this early in the morning. We also have facilities that do fall under exemptions. Some of our facilities include composting on the farm that applies to normal farming operations for use on and off the farm. The exemptions can be found in 62709, uh, 305, and again, you will be receiving a handout or uh, copies of the slides, so you will have links to these rules um, if you want more information on that. Our community composters, um, we know about a 15, but again, growing throughout the state are also exempt if you're composting less than 100 cubic yards of organic solid waste. And again, that's for material generated on and off site. And these typically um, include homeowners, schools, universities, other smaller institutions. A list of your community composters can be found at ILSR.org. And then of course our backyard composting, that's our homeowners or tenants of single use or multi um, residential units. Um, it includes grass clippings, leaves, food waste, anything you know generated by the homeowner. Again, we do see many of our counties and cities that do have programs to give away or to sell at a reduced price backyard composting uh, bins, which is a great incentive for our residents. So as I mentioned, um, you can have a registered facility or you can have a permitted composting facility. If you fall under the registration, you would fall under um, source separated organics processing facilities, and that is chapter 62709. It's limited to one year and must be renewed annually. If you uh, fall under the solid waste permitting aspect, you're in chapter 62701. That permit requires uh, every five years renewal. And then we also have a third category. If you have a pilot project, something that does, doesn't quite fit into the registration or into the permitting aspect, um, you would fall under our pilot project permit. So again, different permits um, fall in for com uh, that compost do fall under different aspects of it. Facilities that do not qualify for the SOPF registration must obtain a solid waste permit and typically what differentiates there that's what most people ask us when do you know when do I register when do I permit permit is usually when you're wanting to go larger volumes different types of materials that's usually when we see permitting come into play what are some other permits or additional um, organics recycling permits well you may have a biosolids processing uh, permit. If you are doing biosolids, mixing it with yard trash or food waste, you will fall under the biosolids permit with solid waste conditions written into there. And this would fall under Chapter 62640. Again, permit required every five years. Um, we also have, if you're an anaerobic digester, you would fall under the air program permit and uh, required to digest an organic waste in the production of renewable natural gas is 62640. Dash 210. And finally, um, other considerations, if you are going to start composting in the state, you will need to look at your stormwater, um, MPDES store, uh, stormwater permits as well. As I mentioned, we do have the 62709. It, it is about to be open. We are working on the rule to update the organics. Um, processing for organics processing recycling facilities. It was last updated in 2010. Um, these are some of the proposed changes we're looking at. We're looking at some new definitions to be included um, in the rule. We are now going to look at or propose to look at um, an operations plan requirement for all registered facilities. That is currently not happening in the current rule. Um, and then the addition of new organic feedstocks into the registration. Uh, I don't know how many of you all for, are from Florida, but we do have a seaweed problem. <laughs> so we are looking to include sargasm seaweed as a feedstock, liquid food waste, compostable products, and domesticated pet waste. 
And to take that a little bit deeper, some of the new definitions we are looking at, um, of course, we talked about feedstocks, tier one and tier two facilities, community composting, mechanical compaction, again, some of the um, additional feedstocks, seaweed, pet waste, compostable products. And believe it or not, our current rule does not have a definition of food waste. So we will be adding food waste or proposing to add food waste, pre and post consumer, um, open to residential collection, it's currently just commercial collection, and we'll replace current definitions of animal byproducts, pre-consumer vegetative and post-consumer vegetative waste. So if you're looking for composting food waste uh, material or information in the state of Florida, you can go to our FORCE website, that's Florida Organics Recycling Center for Excellence. Uh, this serves as a clearinghouse of organics recycling information for FDEP, Florida Department of Environmental Protection. The website includes facility and community composting maps, research and education to promote organics recycling within the state of Florida. If you go to www.floridaforce.org, if you're looking for anywhere to where you might mulch, yard mulch facilities, or manure facilities, or composting facilities, it does have a locator map for these facilities. And with that, that is it for me. Are we holding questions or are we? Yeah, we'll have questions after the session. Okay, well thank you very much.